Interception is probably the highest form of being able to fight and attack in the martial arts or any kind of fighting at all. Today we're going to talk about interception that we introduced in the intro video of this series. Stay tuned, we'll talk about it. Welcome to Shihan's Dojo. I'm Shihan Marty Husband, and I'm here today to help you build your martial arts skill or knowledge, or if you're wanting to learn a little bit about the martial arts, tell you a little bit more about it. So if you're here for the first time, jab that subscribe button and punch the bell so we can notify you when we have a new video coming out. Today's question is simple. What kind of interception do you like to train in for your martial arts style or self-defense? Let us know in the comments and we might be able to get a discussion going. In our previous video of this series, we covered primary attacks and how they are used when we're trying to initiate a fight or whatever. Today we're going to cover the next one of those phases called interception. Now if you haven't seen the previous video, I'd suggest you go out and watch it if you can and we'll leave a link up here at the top for you. We're going to try to break down the details of interception a little bit here. It'll give you a better understanding of what interception interception really is and possibly how to utilize it in your own fighting system. Interception is basically being able to counterattack when an opponent launches a technique and you simultaneously being able to stop it with your own technique and actually finishing it before he can complete the initiative of his attack. You're basically hoping to stop the attack that the opponent just did or force them to abandon the technique they're trying to do. This allows you to take control of the initiative and thereby control the situation a little bit better. I've always felt that Bruce Lee was way ahead of his time in understanding interception. It was the main thing he taught in being able to defend oneself. When he created Jeet Kune Do, he called it basically the way of the intercepting fist. I like that idea and philosophy of being quick and being able to attack in between an opponent's attack by basically catching them on a half beat or a quarter beat once they've initiated that attack. In self-defense, this is paramount for you to understand the legalities of what you're about to do. So, as I said in the previous video, understand your self-defense laws and how you can actually use your techniques in self-defense. I really can't stress enough on the legalities in your state because every state is different in the United States. This would include the legalities of being able to defend yourself in another country. Now in understanding interception, one has to be aware of the situational awareness of what's about to happen. A person has to then be able to train the skills and knowledge of knowing when and how a person is going to attack and to be able to build up the speed or the evasiveness needed to actually counter that technique before they are finished. These skills cannot be learned overnight because the anticipation and reaction that you have to learn needs to be practiced constantly in order to ingrain it into your muscle memory or just the way you are able to fight. The first attack we're going to talk about is a reactionary attack. This type of counterattack begins exactly the moment the opponent begins or starts their attack. There is no hesitation in this attack, not like it's the head-on attack we talked about in the previous one, but it's pretty close because you're reacting to the movement of the technique of the opponent. There are many out there who might disagree with me, but this is one of the hardest types of interception that you can do. It takes a good eye, keen skill, lots of practice, years of experience. Sometimes if it happens outside of that years of experience, it's just plain luck. This skill is hard, especially for beginners. Just understanding how to move the body without getting hit, and one has to have the confidence level that is far above a normal person. It is definitely one of the most effective means of attack. However, if they make a mistake going in, they can pay for it quite easily. The second attack is sometimes called a riposte, which is basically a block and counter at the same time the opponent is attacking. Riposte are probably the most common types of interceptions that are used in an attack. That is especially for lower rank or inexperienced fighters. There are basically three types of riposte that we're going to talk about. A direct riposte is basically one who's delivering an attack on the same line of the parry, going straight in. This is to redirect their opponent's attack so that they can get in the inside side of them and basically go even further if they need to. This is sometimes referred to as Taisen in Japanese, not to be confused with Tainosen which we talked about in the previous video. This can be a very dangerous one if a person doesn't understand their body movements or the mechanics or basic physics on redirecting attacks. Understanding how a technique is normally used can make it more effective in understanding the deflection principles and how to get into the targets you need to hit. A person also has to understand what change-up speed is and how they might have to redirect their punch or kick in mid-action. In understanding this, this will help for the person to see how they can hit a different body part to maybe end the fight quicker if the necessary. Like the reactionary attack, this is done immediately and without hesitation, and you even have to have the confidence in what you're doing when you do this. Both reactionary and this direct riposte can be very scary if you don't know how or what you're doing. 
The second type of riposte is also known as an indirect attack, which is usually on the opposite line of the parry. In other words, if you're parrying with your hand, you might attack them on the opposite side of the head with your foot, with like a straight leg hook, or, or whatever you're using. But it's on the opposite side of the parry, not in the direct line of the parry. It can be done either by passing under a person's technique, or basically over the top of their hand as you parry. Sometimes this can be used as a double block system, too, that is used like in knife defense, as I call a tap and pat system, where you're trying to get the knife out of the way in order to attack. And it's a very common and practical way to make sure you can control whelming situations such as the knife being swung at you or poked in and you're trying to control or have some type of control over the direction of where that knife is going or the punch, depending on what weapon is actually being used. In this type of action, you have to use two appendages. Now, I said hands earlier, but you can use a hand-leg type of system. I don't know when or how you would. I guess that's all dependent on the situation but it is basically two appendages that are taking the parry and controlling it. The last type of riposte is called a delayed riposte. In this type of an action, the biter is usually waiting or hesitating a microsecond, or if you want to call it that, to see what is the action of the opponent to know whether they're directing them or if they need to change somehow. This helps them to decide what they're going to do after the parry for a counterattack in order to better suit their situation. Now again, this is really a high riposte. This is one that takes years of experience and understanding in order for a person to really catch the concept of this interception type. Sometimes this type of repose can also be considered a dual attack because in some instances they will attack whatever is coming at them at the same time that they're trying to get in between and attack the opponent. With an interception repose and a delayed repose, they usually end up going to the ground with these types of a fight. This is usually secondary to what just happened, but they're usually setting you up to take you down. Sometimes a delayed repose can happen in bobbing and weaving like a boxer does. It can be a part of the technique too is since you're not really doing an indirect parry, you may come underneath an attack in between or just dodge out of the way of the punch or attack that's coming into you. You see this with a lot of boxers and professional fighters when they're fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat. The third and final attack is basically the same thing similar to what we talked about in the primary attacks by changing position or posture. Basically this is when a person moves sideways, shifts back, whatever. It, it's to stop Stop the opponent from charging in or damaging the opponent as they're trying to come in quickly with a powerful technique. This is often done by leading the opponent in to force them attack, whereby you stop them usually with a kick of some type, whether it be a front kick or a side thrust kick, back kick, maybe a reverse punch. It's just dependent on the situation. What is important here is that the distance is changed just a little bit to draw that opponent in or get away from the opponent in a direction where you can attack and finish the fight or continue on. There's literally Literally hundreds of different ways to intercept and sometimes you just have to find the types of interception that is easier for you to handle and control. It's very important to practice these in different situations and make sure you understand the concepts behind them. Make sure you use different partners when you're trying to do interception drills because sometimes the size of an opponent, big or small, can make a difference on how you're able to actually intercept a technique coming in. Every person has a different strategy and tactic to their fighting so you have to be aware of it and that's why you sometimes need different partners to practice with, or you'll basically become sugar-sided with a partner, if you want to call it that. It is important that you do find people to train with that don't easily telegraph their techniques, so you can learn to see the signs of imminent attack and understand how to anticipate and see the movements when they actually happen. Now, I hope this video has been some kind of help in understanding interception. There really is a big subject. However, I just wanted to give you a basic physical principles that you can understand to apply into your own martial arts. Now, if you like this video, poke like down there and share it with your friends. Let them know about Xi'an's Dojo so we can make Xi'an's Dojo grow. And don't forget the question of the day. What is your best type of interception that you use in your own martial arts? Or if you have any other questions or ideas you want to share, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And we hope to see you again here on Xi'an's Dojo.